Welcome to unit three. In this unit, we're gonna look at another concept which is very important with lambdas, which is method references. You can think of method references as an alternative way, an alternative syntax for writing lambdas, which is very readable in certain scenarios. We're gonna look at some examples of method references. And then in this unit, we're gonna move on to collections and how the collection APIs can be enhanced and made easy to work with by using lambdas. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of collections because I don't think I can do justice to that in this course. Granted, this course is called Lambda Basics, and I don't think I can do justice to lambdas itself. Uh, I can create a follow-up course with a little bit more advanced lambdas uh, if I get feedback for it. But rest assured that we're not going to be dealing with a lot of depth when it comes to collections. I'm just going to be covering some minor improvements to the collections APIs, and those improvements are kind of there because of lambdas, because lambdas have been introduced into the Java spec. So we're going to start with method references, and we'll see what they are and when to use them. Let's look at some simple examples of method reference in action. So I'm going to create a new package here for unit 3. Then I'm going to create a class called Method reference example one, and this is going to be in the package unit three. And I'm going to have a main method here. So we looked at an example of how we could use the thread constructor and pass in a lambda to the thread constructor in the previous units. Uh, we were able to implement an instance of runnable without having to implement an anonymous inner class. We were able to send in a lambda to it. So I'm going to create something similar. I'm going to show you how you can use method references to make the syntax even more shorter. So let's say I have a public static void print message, right? This is a this is basically a method, which is a static method inside the method reference example one class. And this is going to do a system dot out print till enough. Hello. And now I can execute this by just calling print message and uh, this will obviously print hello to the console. Now what I want to do is create a new thread and use the print message in that, right? I want to make this uh, runnable and have that execute in a separate thread. We know how to do that. We say thread t equals new thread and here I need to pass in an instance of runnable. And rather than create a new anonymous inner class of runnable, I can create a lambda, which is basically something that takes in no arguments, and then it executes print message. Right? So this is this piece of code here is a lambda expression, and it gets treated as an instance of runnable by the thread constructor, and it's going to execute it. So I can say t dot start, and this will print the message to the console. We've already seen this. Now, there is another way in which you can use lambda expressions, and there is a shorter syntax. This syntax is applicable if this lambda expression is kind of like a pass-through. What is this lambda expression doing now? It's basically taking in no R input arguments, and it's executing a method. So what this lambda expression is doing is a method execution. Okay, when something like that happens, when there is no input arguments and you're executing a method with no parameters, or if there are certain parameters over here and then you're passing those parameters to the method, if these two match or if these two are obvious, then there is a new syntax for it, right? And that is method references. Now I'm going to replace this with a method reference and we'll know what the rules are in order to use a method reference as I give you a few more examples. But here's the first example. When you have a lambda expression, which takes in no input arguments, and it's calling a method without any arguments, then you can replace this lambda expression with a method reference. And the method reference looks like this. The first thing is, you give the class name where you have the method. So in this case, it's method reference example one, which is this class. That's where the print message method is. And then you type in two colon symbols, and then you follow that with the name of the method. In this case, it's print message. So this is a method reference expression. And this is equivalent to the lambda expression that we have seen before. So this is exactly the same as doing something like this. 
print message. Okay, so this is what we are familiar with. This is a shortcut for it. Basically, you're telling the Java compiler in the Java runtime that this expression, the one that you have over here, is basically a pass through. All I need to do is execute this print message method. Okay, it's just passing through the control. You're not doing anything extra. So if all you're doing is just executing a method in your Lambda expression, you can use a method reference for it. All right, so this is one example. I'm gonna give you another example. And this time with an input argument. So I'm gonna copy this over and create a new class here called method reference example two. And what I'm gonna do in example two is copy over the functional interface example and make some minor changes to it. I'm gonna copy this whole stuff here. and fix this here. So what are we doing here? We are creating a list of people. We've already seen this. And I'm gonna get rid of all this other stuff. I'm just gonna retain one Lambda expression that should be sufficient for illustrating this. Now we have a method here, a static method, which takes in a list of people. It takes in a predicate to define what should be acted upon, which people in that list should be acted upon. And it takes in a consumer, which is basically what operation you need to perform for those that are cleared by the predicate, for which the predicate says yes, what is the action? That's the consumer. So we are doing these three, we are passing these three as input arguments, right? Now, look at the lambda over here. This is basically saying, given a value of p, pass this to system.out.println. So it's basically saying execute this method for every value that's being sent to it. And this works fine. Let's verify that once before we make changes to this. If I were to run this, we are printing all the people here. Now, this is another example where you can use a method reference. You looked at the first example where we could use a method reference, where the method reference is substituting this kind of an expression where there are no input arguments and it's just calling a method without any arguments, okay? Now here is a second example where you have one input argument and you're calling a method with that same argument, right? So again, this is being a pass-through. You're saying, take this value, then pass it to system.out.println, all right? This is another example where we can replace this with method references. Now, what did the previous method reference look like? It looked like the name of the class, and then the method itself, right? Because this was a static method. How do you call a static method? You say class name dot method name. However, this is not a static method. This is an instance method. You see here, you're using a static reference to get the out object, but out is not a static reference. It's an instance, right? And you're calling a println on that instance. So in order to replace this with a method reference, you're gonna have to take the instance and then double colon, and then the method name. Let me actually do that here. I'm gonna take this out, and then I'm gonna do a system dot out, which is basically the instance on which the println method is being called. Double colon, and then the method name, which is println. Now this is again a shorthand for the Java compiler to say, okay, I'm taking an input argument and then passing it in. Right? Now, how does it know that it needs an input argument? Because this is taking the place of a consumer. A consumer is something that takes in an input argument. So if a method reference is taking a place of something that does not accept an input argument, well, the, lamb the compiler knows that, okay, this is just a simple method call without any input arguments. However, if a method reference takes the place of a consumer, then it knows that there is something that needs to be passed in to that method, to this system.out.println. So it's basically maps to something like this. When there is an, a parameter calling a method of that parameter. So wherever you have the structure, you can replace it with a method reference. Just like you can replace this, which is basically something without any parameters calling a method without any parameters, all right? So this structure can be replaced by a method reference, and then this kind of a structure can also be replaced by a method reference.
let's save and execute this and here you see things still work fine and the reason it works fine is when the java compiler gets this method reference it realizes that this is a consumer so it basically takes in an input and then passes it to this method which happens to be system.out.println